Welcome to Royce Airs, episode 38, where I am joined with Miss Mika Mayat. Stay tuned. <laughs> Happy Wednesday to everybody. Glad to have you all here with us. My name is Royce Ayers Ashcroft, and my dream job is to be a game show host. So I am taking the steps to become the most awesome game show host for you by starting off on a talk show. So here I am, and glad you're here with us. Shout out to everyone else who's working on their dreams as well, too, because I have a lot of talented friends who are working on their LLCs, their 501c3s, artists, musicians, just a little bit of everybody who has to wake up, motivate themselves to get out of bed and do what they got to do because ain't no one else going to do it for them unless they do it. So for you all, remember, be passionate about being passionate so that way you can never fail. Some people say, Royce, no, you can be passionate and still fail, but listen, listen, listen. Whenever you are passionate about something, whenever you're letting that inside fuel you, you're going to, no matter what you're doing, whenever you reach your goals, whenever you hit the dreams, you're going to want to keep going in everything that you're doing. So yeah, just remember, be passionate about being passionate, okay? Tell them that Roy sent you. And also, let's pray for these kids out here because you know what? They're never going to know how to play that one game, Minesweeper, but... Don't worry, we didn't know how to play Minesweeper either, so we're not actually there to be able to teach them. Also, to whom it may concern, concern it may whom too. Please try to be sensitive about people's experiences and stop asking women why they don't have children. Because for some women, they might be infertile or there is miscarriages and just a whole slew of other problems going on and whenever you ask that question you are picking at a wound so just remember to be thoughtful before you say things before they come out of your mouth let's love each other let's not bring each other down and with that today i have a guest here who um, has had plenty of children i'm excited to talk to her i'm excited to introduce you all to her miss mika Mayat, did I say it correctly or do I need to revise? You need a little more training, but I'll work on a it. A little bit more training? Little, it's okay. I'm glad to have you here with <laughs> us right. on the show. Let's let's train real quick before we keep going. Mika. Mayat. Mayat. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I am really bad with this whole accent thing. If you all can hear it, this is 100% American <laughs> broadcasting voice, okay? There is no, uh, you know... Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> hey, just so y'all know, I'm a little bit crazy. I uh we this is our interactive vegan talk show. So if at any time you have any comments, questions, concerns, please feel free to address them. I do this because vegan is the new norm. A lot of people once had this idea that being vegan is uh, you know, they associate it with just hippies. That is this crazy idea, but literally it's the most logical decision that someone can make concerning their health, their wealth, the environment, and the animals. So I'm here to be able to provide any questions that you may have because everyone's going to have to make a decision one day that are you going to be on the right side of history or the wrong side of history? You decide. But it's about you, Miss Mika, today. Uh, make sure you all say hi and bye uh, in the comments. But Miss Mika, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh. Right. So I am from Chicago originally. Shout out raised. to Chicago. We're going to call it Shy Town. Shy Town? Yeah. Man, Shy Town is like one of the worst places to. I'm just kidding. Royce, don't start. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to come on your show and be nice. You know, I, I, I'm a take But you're that. not going to get reckless about my city. Okay, okay. I won't say anything bad about that windy, freaking cold behind, mean traffic people, rude. I'm sorry. All right. Okay, I agree with all that except for the rude part. <laughs> but it is cold. <laughs> it is cold and the traffic is bad. I can't lie about that. But yeah, I was born and raised in Chicago. Like you said, I do have children. I have four girls. Everybody knows me and my four kids. We always running around the city together. Um, we've been in Orlando for like almost two years. Uh, maybe like a year and a half. Almost two years. Something like that. Um, so yeah, I'm here. 
in the city. My kids, I have a couple organizations here. I'm also a nurse, so I'm a travel nurse. Work at the hospital, go around to different hospitals, different states also, and um, I work in the ICU, so. I see cool you nursing. See, I wanted to become like a surgeon or just something where I could help people, but you know, then I realized that I like screaming at people a lot better. So that's the way I feel as though I help people now. Also, they don't allow cats in the in surgery. So. They don't allow cats. No. Speaking no of me cats, <laughs> <laughs> we have our seventeen dollar challenge. Do you all remember the seventeen dollar challenge? What it is is my guest at least five minutes from now and before the broadcast ends has to meow like a cat before the show ends or else they owe me seventeen dollars. So Miss Mika. She agreed to be here. She's going to remember to meow like a cat, so that way she doesn't have to buy me lunch today. Let's check in with our guests real quick, because we got quite a bit of people who are waving, giving heart faces. Yay! I love it. Me too. Siobhan, thank you for coming in. Chris Bland, glad to have you here with us as well. Miss Kathleen gives us a wave, so I'm giving you a wave as well, Miss Kathleen. Uh, LL Productions in the house with Denzel Washington. Chris, if you're really with Denzel Washington right now, please let him know that, hey, there's this really handsome black vegan talk show host who would love to meet him. <laughs> you're not going to bring me along. I'm your guest. Oh, uh, you can tell him that I'm coming alone because I don't want to scare him away. Uh, <laughs> let's <to> see. <laughs> Miss Kathleen. Yes, great topic. We have a lot of awesome topics here today. If this is your first time here with us, if this is anyone's first time here with us on the show, welcome, welcome. Please do not allow my bad breath and scary looks to scare you away, okay? I swear I brush my teeth, but... That's why I'm here. That's why you're here, and y'all don't have to be. You can watch me from a very safe distance. Just kidding. I, I like to think that my breath is halfway decent. I almost fainted twice. Oh, Mika, don't tell them that. Please don't tell them that. I have to be honest with the audience. <laughs> Ola says, thanks for inviting Sister Mika. Just working, so I'm catching what I can. Haven't heard from you in a while. I'm glad you're doing well. Thank you, Ola. I'm doing great. I hope you're doing well also. And Siobhan says, that's my sister. That is my sister, and I love her. Tyranny says, hi, guys. Hi, hey, Mika. Boo. Hi, Royce. Peace and love. Peace and love to you, Tyranny. You're an absolutely fantastic poet person. Uh, I love her. No, no, no. I love her. No, I love her. No, 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 no. I love her. I think I love her more than you. Okay, we will debate about that <laughs> later. I want to know about, so you said you have different organizations, different things that you're a part of. Can you tell us about that? So my um, not-for-profit organization is called Helping Hands of Orlando. Myself and my partner, Siobhan, uh, we go and um, we basically we do feedings for the homeless. We um, house them, clothe them. So we have several houses around the city of Orlando where we actually house homeless people. I wish I would have known about you when I was homeless. We don't accept just anybody. Oh. But... But stay on task, Royce. Okay, so what we do is we house them on um, people who, you know, people get in different situations for different reasons. And I always tell people, like, you're pretty much one check paycheck from being homeless yourself. Mm. So it can really happen to anybody. People are in these situations for different reasons. It's not always drug and alcohol related. It could be for any particular reason. Maybe they lost their job. Maybe they're transitioning from one job to another. Maybe they just got a divorce. It could be all different kinds of reasons. Absolutely. Yeah, and so what we do is we give them a stable place um, to live a home environment not actually like an institution or a building environment but an actual home with their have their own room a kitchen all those things like that so we help out with all the amenities the amenities um we have some of our homes have um like computer labs so they get television cable oh yeah. wow they so pay they get one low, yeah they get, they get the hookup so they pay one low price and it includes everything all of their utilities all of their everything that's they just pay one low price so how can somebody go about being qualified for this? So what they would do is they would um, either call um, myself or my partner, um, and we would do an application with them and see if they qualify for the program. Very nice. Very nice. How long have you been doing this for? 
Um, we like to say our entire life because really our mm. hearts are for the people. Everything that I've done my whole life has been in a helping capacity. Also, my partner, she's also in healthcare. So everything we've done has always been like in a helping capacity. But this business kind of or this organization evolved um, and like took on like a mind of its own. Like it just evolved from something that else we were already doing. And so then it evolved into this. And so now that's what we do and we're excited about it. We're out here helping the community, helping people, children, uh, men, women, just have a stable place they can call home. Mika, I like that because that's kind of how my life is. Whenever people say, when did you first want to know that you were going to be a, a you know, game show host mm -hmm. or a talk show host, whatever, it's kind of been a whole life thing. But now, just now, we're putting a name to it and really working on the label, building the brand, so that way, like, I can pay my bills! That's right. Because I'm tired of those collection calls! Mika, tell them to stop! Tell them to leave me alone! Put them on the do not call list, that's what I do. I did do it with this one, and I still feel bad because I'll go through my phone later, and I'll see that they try to hit me up like six or seven times that day, and, you know, whatever! <laughs> with this one. It's kind of bad because now they can see that I have a show so they know where to find me at. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And they think you're making money. And they think I'm making money because they're like he comes on wearing all these different suits and nice clothes and he always mm -hmm. has his hair cut and I just got my hair Don't cut. Don't ever wear your tie jewelry on here because then they will, they will know. And then they will know. They will really know. You got to tell them that I only paid like maximum three or four bucks per piece because you know I'm cheap. But uh, you're scamming people with this seventeen dollar challenge. I'm so meow. Oh man, man, I was really looking forward to having some good district mills impossible <laughs> burger, but you just kind of uh sorry. It's okay. Um, let's check in with the guests. Guests, I also want to invite you all to. I have a vegan trivia night going on tonight at the District Mills at the District Market on Mills 50. What a tongue twister! We start <laughs> at 7 p.m. and if you miss it, then come out to my open mic competition. Win 100 bucks tomorrow if you have some good talent at Vinyl Arts Bar. There's way more information about that on our North 17 Facebook page. So go and check it out. But. We have Miss Tierney. She says, Helping Hands of Orlando is a miracle. Hey, Siobhan, peace and love. Uh, Miss Tamiko, she said, Inspirational. Inspirational to you. MY, well. I love you. Yeah, we love you. I love MY. She's Absolutely. Awesome. Zarin, Zarin, I apologize for uh, the names. Again, a very good American. Uh, Broadcasting voice, really bad with reading anything that's outside of George, Bob, or Bill, okay? Uh, one of the most inspiring women uh, to have the honor to know. Love you to love you to life, goddess. Hashtag motivating. Could Thanks, you say, Zarin. I love you. Zarin. Okay. Zarin, say something nice about me, okay? Let the people know that you are tuned into one of the coolest, to one of the most chocolatey latte, what? vegan chocolate at that. I'm done with this. Let me ask you a question, Miss Mika. Yes. Are you vegan yet? Yes, I am. Are you vegan yet? I'm vegan, but are you, you vegan, vegan yet? You can answer in the comments. That's what this show is about. So, Mika, what started you along your vegan journey? Oh, my goodness. So, basically, <laughs> what happened, I know people want to be like, oh, it's about the animals. And not that I really want to hurt another soul, whether it's an animal person or whatever. But for me, it wasn't really about the animals. It was more so that I had learned too much about the, um, the food. I just had learned too much about it. And it got to the point where I was like, oh, either I want to live or I want to die. That's how I looked at it. And so I really got to the point where I cried about it mm. because I felt like I was killing me and my kids. And I was like, I just can't do it. I went cold turkey. Like, from one day eating meat to the next day, I went in my house and threw everything away. I was like, that's it. I threw everything out, and I was done, and I haven't had any meat since. I'm super proud of myself. I have thought about it, especially that bacon. But <laughs> let me just say, I have not had any, and those are the facts. So how long have you been vegan? Almost. Uh, no, I've been vegan for three years. Almost three, three years? And a half years. Mm -hmm. So I'm new. Th that's what I try to tell people is like I've been vegan now for two and a half years and they say wow that's a long time because a lot of people associate it with just a fad that mm. you started it one day and you'll be off this diet plan but just like you said whenever you get more aware of 
what it is. It, you literally are killing you and your kids faster. Right. Let something else kill you. Like, I don't know, old age. That's a great way to die. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. Fantastic way to die. I, I have people in my family who said, Royce, you're going to end up dying one day. So I'll be, you just better keep on praying and hoping that, you know, uh, good God will take care of you. I get that. Cool. But if good God is giving me some good food versus bad food, you know, he's kind of giving me that choice of do you want to live a little bit longer? You can stay down there and enjoy yourself more while you're there. Or, exactly. you know, tell Amika, like, why is it so difficult for our people to men to make that change? I don't know. I think it's like food has become like a tradition because I basically feel like the same way that you feel like I feel like that at least I know that I'm going to die at some point and from something you know most likely old age because I'm a vegan exactly. but I feel like why can't I just be healthy while I'm here though like why have to be miserable I don't want high blood pressure I don't want atherosclerosis I don't want heart disease I don't want you know I don't want any of those things so that I'm miserable while I'm here I definitely don't want no diabetes so that's the thing I'm like well let me just um keep myself healthy while I'm here so I can enjoy myself while I'm here and that'd be great I almost choked my cousin DeAndre. Shout out to you, DeAndre. The other day, whenever he had mentioned that, you know, diabetes and high blood pressure runs in our family, I'm like, no, actually, hilarious fried chicken Thank and, you. you know, bat of uh, scrambled eggs every morning for breakfast. Those is what run right. in our family. We don't have just good whole foods, plant based anywhere in there. So I would like to be that uh, shining, guiding light for them to see, like, you know what? Royce, he is like somehow just staying so freaking sexy throughout his whole <laughs> life. You know, his voice, his charm, his charisma. So you know what? Maybe, maybe we should stop killing animals. I get it whenever it comes to it. And it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Whenever they start off, I personally started off for astral projection, lucid dreaming. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to get in tune with myself and decalcify the pineal gland so that way it could all just continue. Oh, yes, you get it. You get it. I wasn't going to go there, but since you're going there. Since we're there. <laughs> since you're going there. No, I wasn't going to go there, but that was that also contributed to why I became uh, mm. vegan as well. Awesome. Yeah. I love it whenever more melanated folks, really whenever everybody uh, just understands that aspect, but... Really, whenever, like, I feel that's where some of our power comes from. You can get a lot of uh, answers, intuition, just peace of mind, clarity. You can begin the healing process because for generations and generations, we've, you know, we've been suppressed, we've been sedated, we've been tortured, just, but the, the true healing can begin with that. So, yeah, like literally my one of my most favorite sayings, I have it on all of my business cards, it all starts with a good plant-based organic lifestyle. It does. You have to clear your body of those toxins. Like yes. and once you like clear your body of those toxins, then obviously, you know, you're going to operate at a higher level on a higher plane. You get it. You freaking get it. Exactly. What about your kids? Mm -hmm. How long did it take for them? Did they do it on their own? Uh, could you tell us the story about that? So, well, of course they didn't do it on their own. <laughs> but I will say that they're freaking awesome. Like, I do have the best kids on the planet. I mean, not because they're mine, but they're just awesome. Like, everybody that <laughs> knows that they're just awesome. Like, they're just, they're magical. And so I, how I handled my kids was giving them the same information I was learning so that we all could be disgusted. You know what I mean? Basically, you have to, like, gross yourself out at some point. Yes. Because it's not like the meat doesn't taste good. Let's just be clear. It tastes good. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So you have to gross yourself out in order to change your habit. And so I was showing them the same videos I was watching. I was giving them the same, you know, information and literature that I was reading. We were reading things together. And so we all came to the point that, like, yeah, we don't want to do this. And so, yes, it's harder for them, and I have to come up with, you know, different ways to keep them excited about it. Um, but I just look at that as a challenge because we're always trying new recipes, you know, new things that we want to um, try and eat, cook, whatever. And so they cook, and it's for um, parents, it's actually easier when your kids are vegan for them to get in there and cook for their own self because, number mm. one, they can eat anything raw. Number two, if anything is not um, cooked through, nobody's getting sick. You know mm. what I'm saying? So I'm like, listen, y'all can go and make your own whatever you want. What do you want? 
sauteed vegetables, go do that. Cut them up and go ahead. So it's like easier for me because they could get in there and cook for themselves if they want to because no one's getting hurt. That is a really good yeah. point. There's no more of this uh, salmonella, exactly. you know. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> I never even thought about it that way, but that's just more ammo that I can put whenever I'm talking to somebody about it. I would also encourage I'll take credit you. For that, no. Oh, you well. Here's the thing. I sometimes give credit for it. Kind of like even that whole. Um, I felt I didn't know how to put it in words with the stop asking women about why they don't have children. Mm -hmm. But there was a Miss Patricia. She had put a status about it, and I was like, oh, thank you for providing me a fantastic speech for the show today. So thank you, Miss Patricia. I'll tag you later so that way you can see this. Y'all see he Facebook lurking, taking all y'all ideas. Oh, ab absolutely. <laughs> Before every single show, I'll admit that to everybody, I go through and I search all the funny memes that you all post, and those are the jokes that I use. And all of the content that I get and comes from honest. all of my friends and everybody who just sends me things like, hey, Royce, check this out. Great. I don't ask them, am I using this? I say, this is going to be on the show today, exclamation mark, end of story. <laughs> I'm giving you the silent treatment from now on. The silent you treatment? Not. <laughs> no, no, we still have nine minutes to go. <laughs> no silent treatment. Actually, uh, for your kids to continue making it easier, one thing that I found with a lot of the kids that will come to like my public speaking workshop is that they meet each other, they meet other kids who are doing it as mm -hmm. well, so they don't feel so alone. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that there's going to be a lot of kids this Saturday at the Peace Walk. Have you heard about that event going on in Lake Eola? No. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. This is their second annual Peace Walk from Solutionary Events. Uh, I'm plugging it in. <laughs> but yeah, North 17, we're going to be out there leading the Peace Walk, so I'm really excited about that. Oh, too. really? So, yes. Nice. That's awesome. I am excited. I'm and doing great things. I'm going to have the speaker out there really just doing my most favorite thing that I like to do, yell at everybody that walks by and <laughs> ask them, you know, I won't cuss on the air, but I'd say, ask them, like, well, why the bleep aren't you vegan yet? In the most loving way possible, though, of course. Oh, really? right. Absolutely. Do they take it that way? Uh, half and half. Mm -hmm. Some think it's absolutely hilarious because they hear my voice. They're like, why is this guy projecting so loud? What kind of <laughs> drugs is he on right now? And I tell them, I promise you, it's okay. I don't do drugs. Just mm -hmm. psychedelics. So, <laughs> I always... <laughs> just psychedelics, that's all. Nothing too fancy. <laughs> Nothing too fancy, everybody. So don't don't sit there and send me mean messages like you do sometimes. Actually, no one sent me any mean messages really? about this show. Yeah, they say like, "Hey, man, uh, good job. When can I be on your show?" I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be the first. Just, Whoa, no, just to toughen no, you up a little no, bit. You just no, you no, have no. to. You got to get some thick skin in there. I am very okay. tough. I got calluses all on my hands and my toes. I don't need any more thick skin. You need thick skin. and You're going to be a talk show host? I, well, yes. I'm going to be a talk show host, a game show host, a motivational speaker, the number one yeah. vegan MC in the world. Mm -hmm. But I, that doesn't mean I need... Yeah, need I do thick, need yeah, thick skin yeah. for that. I'll be the first. It's fine. I'll handle it. I, I got your back, right? But you're on the team. I that's so, why I'm here to help. I'm going to get you some thick skin. Mika, all this black on black crime <laughs> has to stop. It has got to stop. I won't tolerate it anymore. Okay, okay. Yes. I'll simmer down. Let's see what's going on with all of our fun, fun folk. Uh, Tamiko, thank you so much for putting, uh, picking up what I'm putting down. I appreciate you for liking the show. It really means a lot. Ellen. Ellen said, oh, hey, she said y'all kids. I... <laughs> yeah, Ellen said the kids I ate, so not... Uh, Ellen, don't don't try it. Don't, don't she be try. the main one trying to kidnap my kids. I think people think that she's their other mom. Oh. So. Well, your kids are awesome. You got four awesome. beautiful daughters, and they all sing. So, yes. you know, it's... You you about to be rich. Listen, like, that's what I'm... Well, not just because they sing, because they're super smart, each and every one of them. They're highly intelligent. Where do you think they get that from? <laughs> No, but no, but where do you really think they get it from? Their moms. Well, I, I, you can you answer the to, question. Are you trying later. to thicken up my skin now? Is that what you're trying to do? Steel sharpen steel. You know, oh, that's okay. what we're here I'm, for. I'm watching you. You get it. So, do your kids help out with uh, any of your nonprofits? Do you. 
they're at all of the feedings. Um, they give, they fold up the clothes for us, separate them, you know, by male, female, children. They separate the shoes. Um, they normally come out to every single feeding that we have. So, yeah, they love it. They're always like, we need to go help the people. It's so funny because my youngest daughter, when she was a little bit younger, she came up with this um this thing that she called the H2O bag. The H2O bag. For the homeless. And it would have one can get in. It's so cute because she's only like four when she's doing it. Maybe five. And so this is in her head what she feels like someone who doesn't have something needs. So she needed, She put one can good, a roll of toilet paper, and a bottle of water. And that was her H2O bag to give out <laughs> to the homeless. I'm dead serious. To I give like out to the it. homeless. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like, wow. how did she come up with that? And at yet such a young age. What a good heart, too. I, yeah. They're wow. awesome. They must have some really good influences in their life. Probably their mom. I don't know. Well, I mean, let's not get carried away. <laughs> but you should be really happy that whoever they're hanging around, whoever um, that they're getting that from, like, that's that's some really good stuff. Thanks. I appreciate that. Oh, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> let's tune in with everyone. Miss Juniper. Juniper, thank you for coming in. Thank you for tuning in with us. Jabari, I like that name. And it's an ethic ethnic name that I can pronounce and I have to say that because you hear this voice you hear it this is your standard broadcast voice I'm good with saying words like names like Michelle Mary and Bob okay so whenever you throw something new at me don't think I'm gonna pick it up is as that pineal well. gland is still calcified it well we're working on it hey low key. I'm just saying the pineal gland still calcified that's why you know they can't been... say these ethnic names I, no, well, these ethnic names. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> like, I'm going to call you out yesterday on the show. Mr. Timothy Babatunde. Tokumbo Adebule. Now, I feel like I just said it properly and correct because phonetically, I got each and every single syllable. But there's some of these nuances that you all have with, like, no, it has to be more, <laughs> like, more back in the throat. Say it with and, your chest. Yeah, say it with your chest. Mika. My aunt. My aunt. You got it. Oh, but that's so hard. <laughs> My goodness. I feel a part of me just kind of shrink inside whenever I say it, okay? Mm -hmm. I, okay. whenever I, whenever we had spoke and I knew that you'd be on the show, I was like, I'm going to have to find a way to low-key offend her, but like still be her friend because I think it's funny. I think it's funny. Because, you know, you had the natural hair, and you got the kids, so, like, you're a mom, and, you know, I like to, I like to poke fun at my mom sometimes. Mm. So, you know, you just have those elements that I just find very uh, pick-worthy, okay, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It's like, oh, you're a good person, let me just correct you. Yes, yes, some of my nicest friends, I'm like, wow, I'm going to do everything in my power to toughen up your skin. Ab exactly. Yes, yes. But he doesn't want it done to him. Oh, no, no, no. Who sent you? Who sent me? Who sent you? You know who sent me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who all, uh, we got, wow, quite a bit of comments. I can't keep up with everybody. This is awesome. This is what it's all about. You're welcome, Royce. Thank you for being an excellent guest on this the show do. today. This is what I do. What would you want people to take with you as far as that whole vegan lifestyle? For those who say, ah, I can't do it because, ah, bacon, ah, cheese. <laughs> I did that because of the casamorphins and cheese. Whenever people say, I just can't give it up. I'm like, you yeah. sound like an addict. It, they are addicted, though. That's a fact. Yes. Like, they have done studies on that, and they show, you know, how the different parts of the brain lights up with these different things, especially that sugar. You might want to let that go, too. The sugar. I have that to give up my sugar, is, too? Yes. That's you, crackhead behavior. It, it is. I said it. I said it. I did. No, no. You can say what you feel. Say it with your chest. I did. Just I did. as the... Late great Kevin Hart quote. Did you say late great? Late is that what that means, or did I not use that properly? Well, I can go along with late and great. I can go in regards to him. I can. What What does late great actually mean? Because I obviously I use a lot of words that I don't actually know what they mean, but they sound smart and they sound nice in here. But then whenever I say them, people are like, "Whoa, whoa." Late and great would make it sound like he had passed away, like he oh, had transitioned, oh. or it could be like late great because you know his career isn't the best right now like he was on before but he's not on anymore so you could use it either way 
Oh, man. See, now my boy Kevin Hart, he's going to give me a call and say, Royce, I saw what you said on your show, and I didn't appreciate it. He would sound just like that, too. That's what I'm going for. Hey. Kevin Hart. He... But, yeah, he won't call you. No, well, yeah. well I, no, no, no. I have his phone number. Right. Yeah, no, I don't yeah, have it. I didn't think you did. It's okay, though. One day. One day you will. One day. When he's late and great. Wow. See, she said it. Not I just me. But, yeah. As far as just, we were talking about getting off of those addictions. Okay, so I feel like people really have to come to a conclusion of why they don't want to do it anymore. Because you're never going to stop any kind of addiction unless you want to. I mean, you really need food rehab. I said I was going to start a 12-step program for this because it's ridiculous. You should. People need a 12-step program to get off of it. Look at him. Stealing ideas. Yeah. No. Well, what it is is I think that we can partner because right now, I don't know, we had an event a few months, about two months ago, called Vegan Life 101, mm -hmm. where we just help people uh, get, you know, learn about the vegan lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And we had some folks come out. But what happens is, is I have a lot of great ideas. I like to make things happen. But I don't, I'm not a good homework person. So... Whenever they came here, they're expecting these great recipes and great things to learn mm -hmm. to help them. And I'm like, nah, guys, we're just here hanging out, and I'm going to tell you why being vegan is great. Yeah. I don't have much more information for you. So I haven't done another one since, but there have been people who have been reaching out to us oh. who want that. So I would do that. Let's but, yeah, people do need, like, a 12-step program because it can be difficult, um, especially if you don't have the willpower for it. Um, and then also if your whole, your whole household doesn't want to do it, yes. that would be the hardest part. If you have to go against your household, um, you really have to be strong because they will be cooking that meat and that bacon will be the aroma. So yeah, you have to be strong. But I would say other than that, you just have to figure out why you want to be vegan. Like look at the health and the condition of the people in your family. If everybody's obese with high blood pressure and diabetes and things like that, uh, you're next. That was it's just like point blank in the period. Next. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, I say, and don't steal this, okay? I will, but go what ahead. I tell, what I tell people all the time is I go, <clears throat> whatever condition you have right now is your body's reaction to your current diet. <clears throat> and those are just the facts. Whatever your current condition is right now That's is that. your... No. That was my line. Well, what was it, though? That was my line. Miss Mika, I actually appreciate <laughs> you for being on here with us. I thought we still had a few minutes to go, but we're over time, oh. so... Miss Mika, thank you so much for coming on to the show You're today. You're welcome. I appreciate y'all for joining in with us as well, too. Be sure you give me some money on Patreon because, listen, bills are coming up, and like, I'm tired <laughs> of telling them that I just don't got it. Be sure to come out to the Vegan Trivia Night as well tonight, too, at the District Mills Market 50. Yeah, tongue twister. Thank you all so much for coming, and join us tomorrow for tomorrow's guest, the founder of the Music Placement Conference, my friend, and super ridiculously handsome, attractive gentleman, Mr. Gene Culver. We'll see you tomorrow. Royce Ayers Ashcroft, signing out.